Once you're in that world of the unexpected, your mind opens up. Glass pianos hanging over a sidewalk is a very unexpected experience. It reminds me of walking through a forest, and yet it's with incredibly unnatural forms. And my room still rocks like a boat on the sea. Caruso's dream. What you experience is 13 glass and steel pianos tethered off the side of the building. At night, there's light that moves through these fragile forms, referencing and working with the sound of Enrico Caruso's voice. I had known that Enrico Caruso had sung here the night before the 1906 earthquake. He had stayed at the Palace Hotel that night. But the next morning, Caruso was jolted from his bed. He did not know whether he was awake or he was still dreaming. We're very interested in site-specific work. The research was done in the neighborhood. One of the oldest businesses was a piano company. Right in front of that piano company, there was a sinkhole, and they had filled the sinkhole with a piano. This neighborhood was also a factory neighborhood, so that really influenced the material that we were going to use, the glass and the steel. And then the other thing was in the research that we did about Caruso, we discovered that he embraced new technology at the time, and that new technology was sound recording. This area where the sculpture is, is the New Tech Gulch. So we thought it was very interesting to take his original recordings and have that relate in some way to our work. We have no idea really at the beginning exactly how it's gonna go. There have never been glass and steel pianos made like this or hung off a building like this. The pianos are actually being held up by a tripod system, and it's very, very secure. It's safer than probably most of the glass buildings in San Francisco because we had to respond to so many contemporary structural requirements. People ask about earthquakes, and the only thing that's ever going to happen to those pianos if there's an earthquake is if the building comes down, they'll come down, but they're not going to come down. <laughs> One of the other things that we needed to research as we were going through the process was how we were going to deal with the lights. They wanted to essentially represent his voice and represent the music in the lights. As soon as I heard them say that, I was like, this is the project for me because that's exactly what I'm interested in. I think we're all used to seeing graphic equalizers and various ways of kind of visualizing sound in an automated way. And those things can be very beautiful and interesting, but they tend to not feel like they fully match the music. If you actually want to show melody or certain voices, different elements that you have to pull out, that becomes more difficult. And so I, I used the audio analysis as a basis, as kind of a raw material, and then I would be spreading it and moving it around different parts of the composition by actually twisting knobs in real time and recording those movements. I kind of tried to put myself in the mindset of, of being part of Caruso's ensemble, I guess, and being another player, in this case, playing the lights and interpreting the original music as a light composition. When we were conceiving of the project, we were hoping to have sound emanate from the sculpture. I was very attached to the idea of having a directional mic under one of the pianos and having people being able to congregate and come together. But Brian said, you know, it's actually going to be more interesting for people to be able to be on the other side of the street or in their cars and be able to also see the lights. So what we were looking to do was have something that was immediate and easy to synchronize and radio was the only option that we could find. So if you sit and watch these glass forms illuminated at night and listen to our radio broadcast, each of those songs has a completely unique composition and was arranged and directed much like you would direct actors on the stage. After looking at them on a computer screen and now seeing them larger than life, hanging off the side of a building, that's a really, really satisfying experience is kind of being surprised by your own work.